There are some uh, known cases of people who use their, their synesthesia in order to achieve extraordinary feats. So there's somebody called Daniel Tannert who has synesthesia and also has autism, who learnt a uh, pi to 20,000 decimal places. And to recite the sequence of pi took five or six hours. So uh, it's a huge feat to learn it to that uh, length of precision. And to do it, he sat down with 100 digits at a time printed off on a sheet and he would try and remember them uh, in, in this way. But he never actually tried to recall it uh, all in one go until he, he attempted it just on that one occasion. But internally, the way that he uh, recites pi is that for him, each, each digit has its own colour and its own shape. So he imagines walking along the sequence of pi as like a, a textured sequence of colours and shapes and sizes of undulating hills. Uh, and this helps him to kind of recall the, the sequence of pi. So in this instance, he has, he's using his synesthesia to help him and he's also using a known memory mnemonic of, uh, of treating sequences visuospatially. So for example, if people want to learn a sequence of cards to all, all 52 of them, uh, an arbitrary sequence, people can train themselves to do this. And they do it by imagining a route that they know well, and they put the Queen of Hearts in uh, this shop window, they put uh, the Jack of Clubs in this shop window, and so on. And anybody can train their memory to do this. So in the case of Daniel Tammet, he's probably using two things in order to achieve this ability. One is these kind of mnemonic strategies, and the other is um, his natural syn synesthetic abilities to experience digits coloured and visuospatially. This raises an interesting question as to whether or not people with synesthesia who haven't trained themselves in mnemonic strategies have an, a memory advantage. And we've looked at this in various ways. If you give synesthetes lists of words to remember, they do actually, and these are synesthetes who experience words as coloured, they do actually have a memory advantage uh, for, for these lists. They're, they're better at learning them and they're better at remembering the, the lists afterwards. It doesn't apply to all things. So on, on other tests of memory, which aren't related to their synesthesia, um, they don't necessarily have a memory advantage. But they do have a memory advantage for remembering which colour they saw. So if you show them one colour, then you take it away, and you show them three or four colours that are related, so different shades of red, they're better saying, yes, it was that hue and not that one that I saw previously. And also uh, on some other tests, so if you give them meaningless shapes that don't have synesthesia and you pair those with a colour, they're, they're better at saying, yeah, this shape goes with that colour. Um, so here this is a paired associate learning that they're better at remembering and they do very well on that test. So, so, um, so it's related to things, um, to their synesthesia, such as colours and maybe also things like shapes as well, because letters and numbers are shapes. Uh, but also shapes that don't have colour. So we don't really understand where the memory advantage uh, lies. But I should also say that these synesthetes as a group do better than a, a group of controls, but they're not phenomenally better. They're not like these memory experts, such as Daniel Tannert, for example. But nevertheless, the, the advantage is there and it's statistically significant, but it's perhaps one standard deviation above the, uh, the age and sex match norm rather than being a, a huge outlier.